NBC 15 News at 11 starts now. Now at 11, Beloit is now one step closer to officially naming the city's new police chief. Plus, parts of the South are in cleanup mode this morning after severe weather tears through multiple states. And a D.C. madam is coming forward saying she has information that may shake up the race for president. We are following breaking news this morning. The Johnson Creek superintendent tells NBC 15 the school district is currently on lockdown. So here's what we know. The lockdown began earlier this morning. The superintendent said the lockdown was due to an incident outside the school, not inside. He said all students are safe. Now, the students are supposed to have an early release today at 1130. Now, of course, the school is working to get students out by noon. And of course, they say it all depends on the lockdown situation. We will, of course, follow this breaking story on NBC15.com and in our later newscasts. New at 11, the interim police chief of Beloit is one step closer to officially being named the new chief. The city council and city manager announced they've reached an agreement with David Zabolski. Zabolski signed the formal offer of employment yesterday. He was chosen to be the next police chief three to one by the Beloit Police and Fire Commission earlier this week. Now, since that meeting, three PFC commissioners have resigned. The details of Zabolski's formal swearing in ceremony have not yet been announced. Zabolski is replacing former police chief Norm Jacobs. Jacobs and Deputy Chief Tom Duncan retired in January in exchange for disciplinary charges to be dropped against them. Now on to the weather, a cloudy start to our day, and we could be seeing some rain for the rest of our Friday. I know, and I hear what, snow might be in the news, uh, the nearest future yeah, for us. could happen. I don't know, AJ, if you could maybe clear that up for us and the weather, that would be great. All right, I'll do just that. Today we're dealing with a little bit more of cooler temperatures out there, 44 degrees, and there is a cooler uh, bit of weather in our forecast as well, as we do have an Arctic front that will be sliding by later on this afternoon, 44 degrees right now in Madison. You can see temperatures in La Crosse already in the 30s. That's where our front sits right now. Everyone else in the low to mid 40s. And we won't warm things up all that much because that front will be passing by. You can see in La Crosse, there is some snow actually mixing in points northward. Now, I don't think that snow will make it to us as we head throughout this afternoon, but we'll keep an eye on it for you just in case. Otherwise, dealing with a couple showers this afternoon and the cooler weather filters in overnight tonight. And we do have another shot at another uh, storm system coming in as we get into Saturday and that could have some snow with it. And then we'll warm things up for Sunday and I'll have the details on that in just about 10 minutes. Okay, and uh, speaking of weather, severe weather tore across parts of the deep south overnight, bringing heavy rain, hail, and tornadoes. Now the cleanup begins as crews work to clear debris, power lines, and trees that have fallen. Alabama was hit with heavy rain last night. Significant damage was reported about 30 miles southeast of Huntsville. Arkansas was also pelted with big hail. Teams in Arkansas worked to rescue drivers, some clinging to trees after their cars were swept away in flash floods. Now, despite all that damage, no major injuries were reported. Now the storm is moving to the northeast. In our decision 2016 coverage, <coughs> Wisconsin's <coughs> primary election is Tuesday, but voters are already waiting in long lines to cast their ballots. Now, this is video that we captured from this morning's voters waiting to cast those early ballots. One couple told us... They've been waiting in line for an over an hour. More than 172,000 absentee ballots have been issued so far. Last week, the Government Accountability Board projected 1.7 million Wisconsin residents will be voting, and that would be the largest in an April election since way back in 1980. Absentee ballots must be postmarked by April the 5th. Two presidential candidates will be back in Dane County ahead of the state's primary on Tuesday. Bernie Sanders will be in Madison on Sunday at the Kohl Center. This will be the third appearance for the Democratic presidential candidate in Madison. Doors open at 3. The event is free and open to the public. Meantime, Republican presidential candidate John Kasich will be holding a town hall event in Janesville tomorrow. The event will be held at the Armory. The doors open at 1.30 in the afternoon, and that event will begin at 2.30. Yeah, you know, just when you thought the 2016 race couldn't get any more unpredictable, the lawyer for the so-called D.C. madam says he has phone records that could impact the race. NBC News White House correspondent Kristen Welker breaks it all down. It could be yet another twist in the already raucous presidential race. One of the lawyers for the infamous D.C. madam who ran a high-profile escort service exposed in 2007 says he has information voters need to see. 
My name is Montgomery Blair Sibley. Sibley is that attorney, and this week he filed an application with the Supreme Court asking the court to allow him to release records from the D.C. Madam Escort Service, names and phone numbers that have been tied up for nearly a decade due to a restraining order. Sibley writing, time is of the essence. Without offering specifics, Sibley has stirred up a frenzy of speculation with this cliffhanger. Those records contain information relevant to the 2016 presidential election. In this online video posted last month, Sibley asks for donations for his mounting legal fees after lower courts denied his requests. I must continue this fight. This all started in 2007 when the D.C. Madam scandal broke, rocking the nation's capital, even bringing down Louisiana Senator David Vitter, who was linked to the prostitution ring. I want to again offer my deep sincere apologies to all those I have let down and disappointed with these actions from my past. I am completely responsible and I'm so very, very sorry. In 2008, the woman known as the DC Madam, Deborah Jean Palfrey, committed suicide after she was convicted of racketeering and other offenses. Since then, Sibley says he's been sitting on a number of documents, including some 800 client names and 5,000 phone numbers, and he's vowed to release them no matter what the court decides. I am the custodian of the records of that escort service. The question this morning, in a race filled with so many stunning moments, could there be yet another one? I mean, this truly <laughs> is like a Shakespearean play. I know. I don't know if it's a comedy. I don't know if it's a tragedy. I'm not quite sure. I guess we'll see what happens. Coming up on NBC 15 News at 11, a former Madison West girls basketball coach learns his fate in court late last night. More from the courtroom and what jurors decided for Shelton Kincaid. You're watching NBC 15 News with Christine Belport, Ashley Matthews, and meteorologist A.J. Waterman.